Good morning, fabulous people, and welcome to Teaching Painting Using a Scaffolded Approach. I'm Tiffany Fox, just in case you've never been on one of my webinars with Mrs. T. Fox Resources. And whether you're watching me live or whether you're tuning into my YouTube, I just really appreciate you being here. And it is a privilege to get to share uh, teaching painting on a scaffolded approach with you. So two weeks ago, we did teaching drawing using a scaffolded approach. It is very much the same kind of uh, presentation as you're going to see today. And it is already on my YouTube. So if you have not caught that, um, take a look when you have a chance. Um, if you are not on my email list at mrstfoxresources.com, please hop on my email list. I would really appreciate it. I will not spam you. My emails are about five sentences long and that's it. And, and just to the point. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get started. The way the presentation is going to work is I'm gonna tell you why I decided to scaffold painting. I'm going to break the scaffold down into four easy to understand steps. So whether you are teaching a standalone painting class or whether you are teaching a draw paint class, um, this would work for you. Whether you're semester long, year long, um, this approach will work for you. And it's really a success for all kids. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I am hoping this is 23 slides long. My hope is to have us out of here in less than 45 minutes, maybe even quicker, all right? I respect your time and I appreciate you being here with me. So we're just gonna rock and roll with this thing. And thanks again for joining me. Oh, well, we're, we thought we were gonna rock and roll. This is just a very little bit about me. And this is for those of you who've never been to the rodeo before. I am a K-12 certified art teacher. I spent 13 years up in North Carolina as a high school art teacher. I taught art one, painting, drawing, AP studio, and advanced art. So did it all. Large suburban high school, 2000 kids, big class sizes, 35 and up. Uh, so, you know, your standard suburban high school. I was a portrait artist. I actually am still a portrait artist when I can find time to do portraits. And we have since relocated to South Carolina to be close to these beautiful people right here, my daughter and her husband. And they are getting ready to start a family. Um, Little Peanut is coming in December. So I'm on to a new chapter. I am writing curriculum full time for art educators. I'm doing um, art professional development, art educator professional development, I should say. And so it, you can find me on various platforms online. Uh, if you type in Mrs. T. Fox resources, Mrs. T. Fox is all one word, but the easiest place to find all of these things, my Instagram, my Thinkific online PD, um, everything that I have to offer resources and all of those things is to just go to my website, which is mrstfoxresources.com. And this is the first day that I'm announcing that the website has been freshly rejuvenated by Christy Johnson Creative at christyjohnsoncreative.com. She is my online business manager and she has done the most amazingly beautiful job with the site. So check it out if for no other reason than just to see her handiwork. It's mrstfoxresources.com. So that is all you need to know about me. Let's talk about painting. So this is how we came to this revelation that we needed to scaffold the learning for the kids. When I started teaching painting in 2011, this is exactly, this was what I did. I got the kids in there. We went over the layout of how the course was going to go. I'm only speaking to acrylic painting too, by the way. That's everything under the umbrella of this presentation is speaking to acrylic painting. So I told them where everything was. I told them where to get it. I told them where to put it back. I prepared amazing lessons full of concept. They were brilliant. Oh, you know, I mean, I thought they were brilliant. And then we proceeded to paint. And what happened was I had about 10% of the kids that did fabulous. I had 50% who struggled along and quite honestly, didn't paint anything that they really wanted to take home. And we wasted a lot of paint. And then I had 40% that were just kind of wasting a lot of paint all the time. So the yield at the end of the semester, we were on an 18 week semester, 90 minute block, was a handful of good paintings 
and a bunch of crusty brushes and palettes and my sink. I had to have maintenance come in. They took my sink apart and there were actually brushes down in the pipes. No lie. All right. I mean, we're talking totally jacked up. And I and it was just this crazy, like chaotic, all this work for me, all this stress, all these ruined supplies. You know, and supplies are expensive, especially for painting. So I was just, I thought, you know what, I got to figure this out. So I sat back, you know, I was brand new to teaching and I just was like, what, something has got to change. What am I going to do? Enter my mentor with life-changing advice. All right. Jess Summers, Jessica Summers is now a professional painter, an amazing professional painter. You need to check her out online. She lives in Atlanta. She actually just won an award in a show down there. I saw it on Facebook this morning. And she said to me, listen, especially when it comes to painting with the cost of supplies and the mess that you can get from just teaching it alone, she said, you've got to break it down. And not only that, you have to show them how to handle the medium, the paint, the brushes, and we have to hold these kids accountable for their own materials instead of community materials where there's like a can of brushes and they just go get one and put it back. There's no accountability there. So I, I was like, whoa, okay, all of this makes really good sense. And I had already, I was in the process of scaffolding my drawing curriculum. So I, you know, I was familiar with, you know, how well I could do with that. I just didn't realize painting was going to be so much of a train wreck without a scaffold. And so the scaffold was born. And this same slide is in my drawing presentation just because it is a universal law of nature. Practice makes permanent, all right? Kids need time to get good. Kids need skills because skills build confidence. And the goal is success for everyone. Remember on that last slide or two slides ago where I said, well, you know, 10% of the people did fabulous. That's not good enough. If there are 30 people in that class, 30 people need to find a win, a victorious win. That's what they need to find. The added bonus to teaching on a scaffold is behavior problems disappear, right? They do, they completely disappear. So if you're looking for some classroom management um, strategies, scaffolding your curriculum has the added bonus of giving you a peaceful, productive environment. So the painting scaffold has four parts. All right. These are the first three lessons and my little arrows that are going down just show you the progression, the value scale lesson, lesson, lesson. I'm going to describe, I'm going to explain all these in detail on the following on the next slides, but I just wanted to give you an overview. The value scale lesson, the impossible shape, the vector painting. And then once we get through those three, those are the ones that you see behind me. So value scales, impossible shape, vector. Once we get past those three, then we roll all of those skills into one gorgeous, amazing painting toolbox, I call it. And we get to scaffold number four, which is basically where I just said to them, all right, guys, you're ready to paint stuff. Let's paint some stuff. And this right here is where it gets really good. And it gets really good for everybody, not just a few kids. So these lessons over here, the way I handled the bundles that I'm offering at the end, and these are not TPT bundles. These are bundles that you access directly from my online platform. So if your district is um, you know, funny about you downloading or purchasing from TPT, no worries. These are not TPT bundles. They actually are, the pricing is better than my TPT bundles, but I have them structured so that you get these first three plus the disco ball. And then those are one beginner bundle. And then the advanced bundle has these six lessons in it. Both of them have a painting supply list. Both of them have a student contract. So just so you know, as you're looking through this stuff. So supplies and supply distribution, this is always a pain point for teachers because you're like, you know, what do I do and how do I do it? And how do we get the most out of this? And how do we get supplies back in good shape? We have to hold kids accountable. So at the beginning of whatever you have, maybe you only have a unit of painting in your draw paint class, whatever it is, whether it's semester, year, or unit, you're going to do it the same way. You're going to distribute that supply contract ahead of time so that it can come back signed. I've done this two ways. I've done it in print, and I've also done it via Google form, via email. So whatever, maybe do both. 
And, you know, some parents will send you back the copy and some somebody would much be much happier going on to the Google form. Uh, people are busy, so make it as easy for them as possible. Once you get that that contract back, then you distribute supplies. And what I this these were the supplies that we always used in painting. I only use the primaries in white, a warm and a cool of each. We only deal with two paintbrushes. This is a one inch flat Teclon. This is a number six long handle filbert. And in that supply list that's in those bundles, um, you can you can go ahead and find all of the links to purchase those things. And then Ziploc bags, Ziploc storage bags for to keep the pallets. These are, you know, I buy the good hefty brand plates and they last. Kids can rewash and rewash and rewash. And they put everything in the Ziploc to save the paint in between classes. So what they do is whatever paint they need to use that they have saved on their palette, they put a clean plate on top, they slip it into that Ziploc, get the Ziploc with the tongue and groove closure, don't use the one with the sliding pin because that thing is not airtight. And um, then they save it till the next day. So all of these things, I also do a set of this paint, one tube per each, these are eight ounce tubes. I do one complete set per every two to four kids. If you're just doing one unit where you're doing the mini value scales and the disco ball, you could do a set of paint to four kids and that would more than last. I mean, more than last. You could probably do it to six kids. If you're doing an entire semester, you're gonna wanna set for every two kids, every two students, and make sure that they have their name on the bag that that, that paint is in so that they're responsible for it. This completely changed my life. And I hear from my educators that it changes their lives too. So why only the primaries and white? Color theory, color theory, color theory. Experimentation, we want kids to mix. We want them to discover all different kinds of secondaries and tertiaries. Like this right here, both of these students chose to do a yellow green vector painting. This is a warm and cool combination that's different from this. So it's 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 a it's a way for them to really understand how the paint interacts and works together. This is a, was one of my painting two students. She also did the vector, but I made her do a chromatic black. And then of course they do the chromatic neutrals and blacks with the value scale that you see behind me. So it's a problem solving. And I don't, I don't micromanage the blending and the mixing. I micromanage the blending in the beginning, but not the mixing. Because like if they're gonna do, if they're gonna do a, a yellow green vector, then what you want from them is to do the yellow green combo of their choice, the warm and the cool of the yellow and the blue. So it's it sort of lets them, it gives them some autonomy in the beginning while they're getting their skills together to choose the color combos that they want because they need confidence. So there's nothing like mixing a chromatic black to boost your confidence. All right, so the number, the very first lesson that they do is value scales. Okay, and this is the hook. This is the buy-in. Okay, so let me back up just a little bit and tell you the kids do not use any mediums, no uh, blend, no, no, you know, medium that's going to lengthen the drying time of the acrylics, only water. And we do this particular lesson and the impossible shapes on quarter inch foam core, which there's also a link in the supply list for you to buy that. But this is the hook, this is the buy-in. Learning target here is of course, basic mixing and color theory, because they have to learn how to make all the secondaries, all the tertiaries. You can see on here, there's no red and there's no blue because they don't have to mix those. I want them mixing. I want them thinking about secondary and tertiary colors instead of just squirting blue out of a tube. The only color that I make them um, do the entire value scale, the only primary is yellow because it's really difficult to get a nice dark yellow without it going straight to mud. So, you know, and they're using the complementary colors to get the darker, um, the darker values of the value scales. So the color theory, the color mixing, you know, the mixing a nice, clean, even distribution of paint that's not streaky, that you can't see if you're doing tints, you don't want to see white streaks in your paint. How do they load their brush? How do they apply the paint? You know, that you, we teach them they don't get the paint all the way down in the ferrule. They want to keep it in the upper half, you know, the outside half of the tip of the brush so that they can get a nice, even distribution and they're painting a crisp 
value transition. So the learning here is mixing hues, mixing tints and shades and tones. And I use shade and tone interchangeably because we don't use black. If we're making a color darker, we're using the complementary color. So I say tone for the darker values, but because shade technically is adding black and we don't use black. So if you hear me say tone or shade, I kind of use those interchangeably. And so this is the value scale long version. This is the value scale short version. I did the short version during COVID when we were on lockdown because I had to send kits home. And this is, uh, you know, this is a large piece of foam core and this is a small piece. So this fit in their portfolio that they picked up from school. So this is these, this is the beginning foundational lesson that everything else builds on. This lesson right here is the one that when my kids give me feedback at the end of the semester, they said, this is the lesson that they learned the most in. They said, I, I would say to them periodically, what do you think about maybe not doing the value scales like for the next class? And they're like, oh no, Fox, that lesson is the one we learned the most in. So I was like, all right, who better to give me the advice than the people who did the lesson? Why foam core? Why foam board? This stuff is cheap. Not as cheap as it used to be, but in the long run, for you to have 30 kids or 25 kids that are painting and you want them to all do a big value scale board, it's way cheaper and it's lightweight. And it's just, uh, I, just there, I just found that it was a great thing. And let me tell you something about foam core. You may not have to buy it. If you go out into town to your local frame shops, I had a friend that owned a frame shop. She would give me all of her scraps and the scraps are big. And I mean, she would load me up. So stop into your local Michaels, your Hobby Lobby, your frame shop and see if they have any, they have to throw it away and it makes them sick. Okay, so go ahead and take it off their hands. Pro tip for the foam core, it's very light. So it kind of bounces around. And if you're on an easel, we took duct tape and rolled it and put it behind and then we went on a half inch piece of foam core. So the, basically they had one board with everything taped to it. So if you're not in a position where everybody can leave their painting at their easel, if you're in a more you know crowded or portable situation, this, the paint dries really fast. So you could have them take the board with everything taped to it and stack them in the corner if you needed to. And it's very lightweight. You could even put them up on a shelf. So the method behind my madness is that because acrylic paint dries so fast and on foam core, it dries even faster. Kids have to learn to mix with in, and paint with intent and purpose. There's no messing around. They can't mess around. They don't have time because as soon as they start to mess around in the paint, it starts to dry and it starts to lift and you get that white spot. So, and remember, they're not using any extending medium. It's just water paint on the foam pour. So this really helps them make a decision and get the paint on the, on the canvas quickly on the first two exercises. So that was something I kind of learned by mistake. And I'll tell you about that when I get to the vector. But again, we're building confidence and this is a major confidence booster when they can paint on this foam board. My coworker, oh my gosh, she said to me, you are so hateful making them paint on that foam board. But they, the, the subsequent paintings come out so much better. So this is number two. This is the impossible shape. You can see a couple of them behind me. They know how to mix. They know how to tint, shade, and tone. They know how to distribute the paint, make a crisp value transition. They come into this lesson and they are adding a soft hue and value transition. So all the learning from number one, plus the learning from number two, gives us these gorgeous impossible shapes. So see, that they have a chance to take what they've learned and paint something that's not so intimidating because this is not a thing. It's just this kind of funky, impossible shape. So we're still in the beginning stages of getting them super confident and super used to using the paint. So we don't want to just hit them with something really hard, like, hey, let's do this, you know, still life with 15 objects. We want them to be able to take their learning and just sort of take a little baby step and do something like this. And this is foam core, 11 by 11. Again, here's the student painting with everything. It's just, once once you get through with the value scales and you see them with the confidence going into this, it's amazing. I'm talking no pushback, people. Can you imagine no pushback, no whining? No, I can't do this. No, like it's, it's amazing. The confidence level is amazing. So this is number two. This is the number two lesson. The number three lesson, 
is the acrylic vector painting. So it's behind me right here, here's four of them. And if you're thinking, well, who did those? My students did these, all right, they did these. And what happened is sometimes I have seniors and I'll just be like, do you mind if I keep your vector? And they're like, no, of course not. It's a vector, you know, some of them take them home, but I do ask on occasion and they will gift me and thank goodness they do. The learning target here is this is the first project on a canvas. So here's the beauty. They know how to mix with intent and they know how to put the paint on with intent and they know how to put it on correctly. They know the crisp transition. They know the soft transition. They know everything. And now they're going to do this gorgeous. That's why they're all so gorgeous, guys, because they, there is no, I can't do this. They've done, they've had, this would probably be about week four four, probably a week and a half for the other two. So we're going into week four with painting. We always do the IM boards or the family album at the beginning, you know, or the altered books so we can get the class nice and cohesive uh, as far as community goes. But this is probably the fourth week of painting. So all kinds of, of excitement from them because they know they can do it and they're not intimidated. It's just crazy. When I roll this out, Nobody says like, oh, I can't do this. You know what they say? All right, let's go. Let's go, Fox. Like, let's like they are so ready to go. And this was the very first vector class right here. And it's behind. This is the display behind them. And they were just so stinking proud. And this is painting one. This is intro. Like everything that I'm showing you, this is intro to painting. So kids have never painted before at this point. So now we're talking about painting some stuff, all right? So we take everything we've learned in combination of lessons one, two, and three, and I say to them, all right, guys, now we're gonna paint some stuff and we're gonna paint some cool stuff. And the learning target here is now that they've taken everything they've learned, they're gonna add in some student choice. They're gonna, you know, and when I say student choice, I mean, we do the magnificent metallic piece they choose the color, you know, we actually wrapped these up ourselves, you know, they're only about this big, we wrap them up in this metallic wrapping paper, they taped them, they photographed them. But if you buy, if you get the lesson, all of those photographs are included so that you don't have to do that step, because that was quite honestly, like a whole day, almost two days of just getting reference photos. We've done all the hard work for you. So when I say choice, I mean, okay, we're painting a car, you choose the card that you're going to paint and you take the photo. We're going to do the sandwiches and the appetizers. You bring the food, you take the photos. So the kids cannot wait to get to school to paint. I used to have kids come in on their lunch and paint, stay after school and paint, come in before school and paint, go home and have their parents buy them all of the same supplies so that they could paint at home. Guys, it is addicting. And they really discover that if they just take the time to go through the beginning steps and believe that, they, cause I know they can do it, but if they just take the opportunity to fight through the beginning where, you know, it's tough in the beginning, it dries fast and you've got to figure out all kinds of ways to load the brush and make things work, crisp edge. They don't tape, we don't tape any of these things. None of this is taped. This is all, you know, with that nice flat one inch tack on brush, and the room is neat and clean because everybody is responsible for their supplies. And I usually give maximum of five minutes to clean up because remember, they're saving their paint. So all they do is throw the clean plate on top, slip it in the bag, zip it up, or they rinse it off in the sink. I show them how to clean their brush. I show them. I put the soap in my hand. I put the brush in my hand. I rinse it off in front of them and show them. So that, that thing, that doesn't take that long. And then they put, put their paint back in the bag and boom, we're done. Clean up. So the room is neat. The room is clean. I had a, a teacher. I know she's not going to mind if I say this. Her name is Michelle Flynn. She had 150 kids painting using my, my curriculum. 150 kids. She said she did not have one crusty paintbrush. She did not have one palette in the sink. Everything was accounted for. And she said, I don't know what kind of sorcery, but she said, I'm so glad I discovered it. So when I show them on their presentation, like all the advanced projects in the bundle at the end have a presentation for the kids. This is like, this is the, the slide from the car presentation. And I actually show them, guys, this is what we've done so far. This was what we learned. Boom, 
number two, number three, number four. In this case, we did number four and number five. We did the sandwiches and the cars that particular semester. Sometimes I do the sandwiches and the master study. Sometimes I do the car and the master study because you don't have time for everything. That's the other beauty about the bundle at the end. Those six lessons, you're not going to do those, the advanced bundle all in one semester. So you can change it up. And I changed it up every year. Well, yeah, a lot, a lot of times my painting class ended in January because we were ending after Christmas and we were in North Carolina and we would get bad weather. Sometimes we'd be iced out for a whole week. So I, if I thought a lot of bad weather was coming, I didn't do the collaborative master study, which I'm going to show you, but it helps the kids to see, okay, this is what we've done. This is what it has given us skill-wise, and that's why we're able to do this. So three super, super easy tips for success. Show and tell them everything you expect them to do. Do not ever assume that you want them to, to put their paint back in the Ziploc and zip it up. Literally, put a plate on top of another plate, slide it in, zip it up while they're watching you. Clean the brush while they're watching you, okay? All of these things. Dump the water out, lay the brush on top of the cup while they're watching you. It makes all the difference in the world. As far as the caps, remember the, the binder in acrylic is plastic. So with the caps, I would actually show them, guys, if you don't, if you don't clean the cap and close it all the way, it's going to stay open. It's going to dry out. You're going to get this big piece of plastic gunk on top, you know, like all those things. And I used to think, why am I telling them? You know, because it, don't expect them to know if you're not going to tell them. That was my my own personal advice to myself. All right. So teach them all of these things. Show them all of these things. Keep your due date short. We were just discussing this in another call the other day. And the due dates have to be short. Anytime you give somebody two, three, four weeks to do something, it's they're going to waste time. It's, it's too long. So if you end up buying the bundles, Time frames for every single lesson are included, explanation of what to do on day one, two, three, all of that's included, and fix the focus on them. My focus was always on the kids. They were the most important people in the room. What they did was the most important thing. I devoted my wall space to them. This was my closet for Pete's sake. I had master studies in my closet. This is for four kids to a painting, four panels that created one big painting. I'm going to show you another slide here in a minute. But I always, 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 and if you don't have time to do it, have the kids do it. Have them, my kids put tape on the back of every one of these disco balls. And I just stood on the ladder in the hallway and they brought them out to me. So it's, it's you know, it's, it doesn't have to all be on you is what I'm trying to say. This also injects investment and accountability into the process. If they know that when they walk in every day and their friends walk in and other teachers walk in, the whole room, the whole hallway Everything is devoted to them and their progress and their success. So now we're going to look at some student work examples. And I'm just going to talk a little bit about this before uh, just show you what, you know, what each project is. Talk a little bit about it. And then I'll show you the bundles and then we'll be good. So this is the disco ball, which, oh my gosh, guys, if you have an art one, if you have a draw paint that is largely younger, like freshman, eighth grade, if you have a lot of boys, I had a class of 37 art ones, 14 of them were freshman boys. Okay. Everybody just get a mental picture of the climate of that room. All right. The, the culture of that room. Okay. As soon as I introduced acrylic paint into our painting unit for the art one, we did drawing and then we did painting at the end. It was just like total productive, unbelievable, like amazingness, because this is not intimidating either. And that you can sort of speed, what do you call it? Speed scaffold if you don't have a lot of time, because this is an opportunity for them to not only learn to mix the warms and cools, there's like a mini uh, value scale, three-part value scale lesson that goes with this. They can learn that color theory. They can learn to use the paint and then they can, they're going to paint little squares and then they're going to come over here and paint little squares, but it's going to be this gorgeous disco ball. So this was done with nothing but the primaries and white. They did not have black. This is art one. Both of these, I chose to show you both of these. Both, this was a senior boy and this was a sophomore boy. All right, both of those. So great, great, great lesson. This is That's a Wrap. This is the package lesson. So this one, um, 
just amazing as far as, you know, we wrapped all of these. These are boxes from the post office that I bought. And we took white drawing paper. We wrapped them up. We, I got, you know, just like a roller ribbon and I got some bows off Amazon. But all of these photos are in the lesson. Like all the photos we took are in the lesson. So if you don't have time to take photos, don't take photos. This is that magnificent metallic. Both of these are just an extension of the soft value in hue transitions, the crisp value in hue transitions. They're just painting shapes in both of these. So really, really nice, uh, really, really nice way to show off those skills. This is sensational silverware. This is also the kids brought the silverware in. We took it out in the sunlight. They took all their photos, but all of those photos are included in that lesson. So you don't need to do that if if you don't have time. And then here's some more impossible shapes. And this is a vector. This was like uh, two years ago, I think. This is the vector lesson. This makes an awesome common area display. You want some, some serious sales pitch for your program? This is it right here. People walk by and see that and they're like, whoa, that's insane. And on this one too, you'll notice there's no, these are yellow orange. There's no primaries. These are red violets right here. So there's no primaries. This right here is supposed to be a blue green. It ended up a little more blue, but I try to keep them always in the secondary and tertiary colors just for optimal mixing. These are my kiddos with accommodations. If you've been with me before, you know that I want to win for everybody. I especially want to win for these kids because these kids don't get a win everywhere. All right. So if I can get them excited and get them to paint something they are super incredibly proud of, then to me, that is the biggest one of all. All right. It's it's one thing to have everybody win. It's another thing to have everybody win right alongside your kids with accommodations. So these precious sweethearts, this was, this one was done during lockdown. This one got brought to me during lockdown. So just amazing and beautiful work. And I don't really, uh, the only accommodation that I really apply in, in the painting is maybe to give a couple extra days and only if they need it. And let me tell you, 95% of the time, they don't need it. They are right on, on track and on board with, uh, with the whole entire timeline. So more student work examples. This is Delectably Delicious. This is in the Intermediate Advanced Bundle. This is so much fun. Kids brought in all of the food and all of the sandwich makings, we do the we do the appetizer first, and then after they do the appetizer, they do the sandwich. The this was an eight by ten canvas. This was I don't, hope I'm not speaking out of turn. This was I think a sixteen by twenty canvas, stretched canvas. And all of those links are in the supply list that's included. Supply list is included in both bundles. But this is so much fun because all of these things the kids created themselves. And then they had a big feast when it was over. This is acrylic automobile. This guy, this painting is uh, lesson is super popular um, on my Facebook and on my Instagram. This is, like I said, I either do this or the acrylic master study at the end of the semester. And these are all cars that the kids took photos of, but also in that lesson are the cars, the photos in case you don't have time to take pictures. Sometimes that's just not an option. This is one of my all-time favorite lessons. This is the acrylic master study, and this is a group project. So four panels, each student, groups of four, each student, of course, has one panel. And the idea, the goal, is that not only does the, the painting have to match the master study, the image that they use. Like, of course, this is the Thomas Hart Benton. Uh, this is a Margaret Morrison. All three of these are Margaret Morrison. She is a painter out of Atlanta. And oh my word, y'all, she is not only the most amazing painter, but she is the most amazing person. Uh, one of the most amazing people I think I have ever met. So, and she's just wonderful to support, to support my kids. I, I contacted her. I just have to tell a quick story. When I very first did this, it was 2015. And that woman and her husband drove from Atlanta, Georgia, three and a half hours, one way to Lake Norman, North Carolina, to come to the art show, to see the master studies that the kids had done of her work. This is her work. And she actually spoke to them, encouraged them. It was just, she's an amazing person. So this is the, all three of these are Margaret Morrison. And this of course is Thomas Hart Benton. This is painting one. 
painting one, painting one, painting one. These are my kids with accommodations down here in the lower bottom corner. And then this is painting two up here on the right hand corner. So as far as, you know, differentiating, if you have a mixed level class, I always did the same project. I just made the level of difficulty harder for my, my twos. So these are 36 by 48 when they're finished and they're absolutely amazing. So like I said before, not only do they have to match the master study, each panel, each quarter has to match the one next to it. So they have to really work together. This is a, you want to talk about collaboration? This is collaboration at its finest. Okay, so these are the two bundles that if you are interested, I'm just going to tell you real quick, the one on the left is scaffolding one, two, three. Your value scales, short and long version, your impossible shape, your acrylic vector, the beginner. And then you have what I like to call my disco ball bundle, which is the three-part value scale practice and the disco ball project. Parent supply contract, I mean, student supply contract and a supply list. So that's the first one. The second one is an intermediate advanced painting bundle with all six of those lessons that I showed you work from on the previous slides and the supply contract and the supply list. Okay, so these are the two. Pricing on both of these is better than on TPT, just because if you took the time to watch my watch me wax on about acrylic painting, I need to give you something. So I gotta give you some savings. So this is the beginner painting on a scaffold. So just so you can see the bundle. So if you've already bought this on TPT, you know, hold up. You're not going to want to buy this because it's the same thing. It's just not from the TPT site. All right. This is the painting list with all of the links to everything that you would need to purchase. This is your supply contract and it is editable. And then there are five easy to use lessons. And when I say easy to use guys, I have created video tutorials. Like if you're thinking, oh, okay, well, she talked about how to load the brush, but you know, if you have never taught painting and you're, I, I go over all of that in the tutorials, especially in the value scale tutorials. I go over how to distribute the paint on the palette. I go over how to mix so that you don't waste paint. I go over how to actually apply it onto the rectangle. I mean, it is ad nauseum. All right. I tell you, I tell them or you everything. So that just, just in case you have never taught painting and you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. I got you. Okay. So there are tutorials throughout every single lesson, especially the disco ball lesson. I even added a tutorial on how to get the squares on the ball. That wasn't in there originally. It is in there now. So if you have purchased that on TPT, re-download it because there's a new video in there. So you can either scan the QR code or you can go to my web straight to my website with this particular link right here and go to purchase if you like. This is the advanced um, curriculum. So the advanced bundle. So I say intermediate to advanced just because if they've gone through those first three scaffolds, they're ready, guys. They are so ready to get in there and paint. I also want to make a side note that my kids always had to take drawing before they took painting just because they need the skills. They need to know how to scale something up. They need to know how to get something onto a surface without using a grid. I mean, my kids didn't even draw on the canvas. Like when they did the cars and the sandwiches, they had to paint a contour line and the metallic and the package. All of those are painted contour lines. We never used pencil because I just really wanted them to take those rock solid drawing skills and translate them to the painting. So again, if you've not seen the drawing webinar that's on my YouTube, check that out too, because all of these things scaffold them up to become super, super successful painters at the end. Um, so let me see, six lessons here. So all six of these and all come with reference photos. Um, these do not come with tutorials. The tutorials are in the beginning. And then of course, uh, in the beginning lessons. And then of course the uh, painting supply list and the um, student contract. So uh, here is your, your QR code. And then there is your link. So I believe, I'm hoping, I don't know. Oh yeah, that's it. So listen, y'all have a fabulous day. Don't forget, mrstfoxresources.com. Get on my email list. 
and then watch that drawing to watch that drawing webinar to um, teaching drawing using a scaffold approach. I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I hope to see you soon. Have a good one.